Yes, good afternoon. Welcome back to the channel. Hope each and every single one of you are doing well. We have got a big transfer update, but more importantly, we are 248 subscribers away from 24,000. And more importantly, 73% of everyone who watched yesterday's video was not subscribed. So what are you waiting for? If you could also leave a like on the video, the like game has got absolutely ridiculous. We're in seven, eight, nine hundred, sometimes a thousand likes. On each video, we're going to be talking Tottenham potentially signing Eze after the transfer window. Tottenham have offered two players and cash for Jacob Ramsey. And those Conor Gallagher talks are back on. We're also talking Desiree Due, Pedro Neto. And Tottenham's transfer strategy at present. Let me know your thoughts down below. Make sure you leave a comment and let me know if you've liked the video or not. Now, Tottenham are an interesting club, aren't they? We're a very interesting club in terms of in terms of our transfer strategy because what the way I look at it right now is Tottenham are we need a number six, we need a wide player, we need a number nine, and we need a defensive cover, whether that be a left back, right back, or centre back. Now, this Jacob Ramsey one's a weird one many, many, many reports from The Athletic, The Sun, The Mirror, The Standard, The Evening Standard, Ali Gold, have all reported Tottenham's interest in Jacob Ramsey. But to me, it doesn't... I don't get the, the interest because we have got so many eights. And what we really need is a number six. Now, Basuma's not a six. Benson Kaur's not a six. Hoiberg is, but he's going to go. Skip is, but he's not good enough. And then you've got Bergval, who's an eight. Sars an eight. Basuma, Benson, Core, Bergval, and Ramsey are all eights. So I don't really understand, at present, the interest in Jacob Ramsey, unless Benson, Core, and Basuma both go. Because, you know, we've got more eights than, you know, London-Liverpool straight on a night out on a Friday night, went down in Dirty Martini. I don't really get the interest. Like, I understand that, you know, the likes of Johan Langer is a long-term admirer. They spent time together at Aston Villa. I completely get the interest from Tottenham perspective in terms of his profile. But in terms of Tottenham's transfer window as a whole, I, I'm not really understanding where we're kind of where we're going. You know, we need an out and out DM. Now, the only possible explanation could be that Archie Gray plays as a defensive minded player, but he's not an out and out number six. He's not an anchor in that six. And that's exactly what we need because when our fullbacks invert, we're left with, a, with, with two centre backs and the DM. The DM has to be the anchor role that can just sweep up, kind of like what Rodri did last night for Spain. Absolutely brilliant performance from Rodri, the best defensive midfielder. In world football now, and it's not even a debate anymore. The guy is absolutely world class. Premier League titles, a treble, and now in a Euro final. But the standard are coming out reporting Tottenham plan players plus cash bid for Jacob Ramsey. Tottenham are plotting a three player swap deal with Aston Villa. Not one, not two, but three. Now, those three players. Probably a Brian Hill, Jed Spence, and maybe Hoiberg. Or La Celso. That, that is the only... And even that is three players for Jacob Ramsey, a good enough deal. Brian Hill, not any good. Jed Spence is leaving. Brian Hill makes sense because he spent time, uh, he spent time in Spain. And he understands the way Unai Emery plays. Giovanni Lo Celso would uh, join him at Villarreal. But Tottenham are plotting a free player swap deal with Aston Villa. Villa rate Jacob Ramsey at £50 million. But could let him go, according to Football Insider, with Giovanni Lo Celso heading in the other direction. Another unnamed player is said to be on the table to sign for Spurs. Another unnamed player is said to be on the table to sign for Spurs. Although it feels like the early stages, still with Villa, potentially reluctant to offload Ramsey. 
Now, I put a tweet out yesterday saying Ramsey wants Spurs because that's what a lot of the reports are saying. Ramsey wants to join Tottenham, which whether you believe that or not is up to you, but I can, I can understand why he wouldn't because Villa are in the Champions League. But where we are right now as a football club, is Jay, does Jacob Ramsey take Tottenham to the next level? No. Is he a good player? Yes. Is he homegrown? Yes. Can he fix some of the issues we have? Potentially. But we need an out-and-out out number six. And if we neglect the number six, for me, it's... It's, uh, I don't know, it's it's worrying. Now, I want to show you potentially what Tottenham's lineup could look like next season with some of the players that we're bringing in and looking at. Now, the numbers aren't exactly perfect, um, but this is what I think Tottenham could play the first game of the season if we get our signings in. So, Vicario, apologies if there's any spelling errors. You doggy, Poro, Van Der Ven, Romero. Gray in the six, Bergval in the eight, Madison in the ten. Eze or Son out left, Son or the new striker up front, Johnson on the right. This is roughly what we look like when you've got, you know, your doggy inverting into midfield and you've got Poro inverting into midfield. You've got, you've got that high defensive line of Van der Ven and Romero and Van der Ven's doing his sweeping like that. But this number six role is impeccable to the system because it gives that defensive line a bit more reassurance. Now, the number eight Bergval will obviously rotate in this area. Um, and Madison will probably keep, pick, get, get the ball deep like he always does and then move forward like that. And probably it will be something like, I'd imagine something like that. Now, the DM is so, so important, but we're not really linked with any DMs as it stands, which is a little bit concerning. That 11 is very, very strong. Then you've got the likes of Timo Werner. You've got the likes of Richarlison, Bentoncourt, Bissouma. I don't necessarily know if Bergval comes in and completely gets 100% minutes straight away. I think he may have to kind of fight for that. Um, but in terms of Tottenham's lineup, what do you got? Well, like if that was our lineup for the first game of the season, what would you guys make of it? Let me know down below if you haven't already. Now, I'm not so sure if Ramsey, let's just put Ramsey uh, there as well. Um, Ramsey. That could potentially be our first lineup. Then I put a, I put a tweet out. Of, make sure you follow me on Twitter because I am very active on there now. Um, I put a tweet out saying, if this was our potential 11, where do you think this guy, this team would finish? And the amount of people that hated this 11, you know, if we don't sign a striker, I think Son will play through the middle. It looks like Douay and Neto are the wire players he want. Eze, Ed, well, obviously that will probably be grey now. But that is probably the sort of lineup I think Tottenham would really excel at. Let me know your thoughts down below if you haven't already on that potential lineup. Now, another player where the links have come up again a couple of times is Connor Gallagher. Connor Gallagher. You know, I don't know how I feel about Conor Gallagher because the links, the links have been, you know, basically it's it, it's going to be Gallagher or Ramsey if we bring in a number eight. But I just don't see it. Like Conor Gallagher for me, fifty million pounds is absolutely ridiculous. Um, I think it's crazy. Uh, I, I don't I don't think it's it's a it's it's a good bit of business at all by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, we'll come back to Gallagher in a minute. Simon Davis has turned down an offer to join Wales coaching staff as an assistant coach under Craig Bellamy in order to remain as Spurs Academy director. Uh, and that, obviously, Simon Davis has got a very, very important job with the likes of Jamie Donnelly, with the likes of Mikey Moore, Tyrese Hall, Santiago, Dorrington. You know, very, very important role. Uh, and there he is. Um, so he will still be Spurs Academy director. Now, there's a few links coming out of a, we'll, we'll come back to Gallagher in two minutes. There's a few links coming out with regards to um, a Turkish midfielder. We spoke about this guy a few months ago. Um, and there's also a Polish midfielder we're being linked to, Sebastian Simanski, which I'll be honest, 
I don't know much about. I'm not expecting anyone to really know much about this guy unless you watch Turkish football. Tottenham are set to complete a deal for Fenerbahce star Sebastian Samansky, and they're finalising the details of the move. The 25-year-old midfielder has already agreed personal terms with Spurs. Spurs have made an initial offer to Fenerbahce worth 25 million euros plus bonuses. Samansky provided 13 goals and 19 assists across 55 comp uh, games in all comps last season. I'm pretty sure Ali Gold said that these links aren't concrete. It's just paper talk. Um, Ali Gold last night said, I asked a few people around um, about him and nothing really came up of that unless something has really quickly developed. Look, we all, this is going to be normality now. We're, we're going to be linked to a lot of players that people just haven't heard of. That's just the way Ange Postacoglu wants to run with it. He wants to be, you know, pulling gems out of absolutely nowhere, like a Desiree Dua. I know he's got a lot of links to some big, big football clubs around Europe, but this is the way he rolls. Um, let me know your thoughts down below on this, because I personally think, as it stands right now, you know, Samansky could be a world beater for all we know, but I just don't know if it's realistic because, you know, Ali Gold said it's not concrete, but let's actually have a look at him uh, very quickly and see what he's about because Sebastian Samansky, so he's 25 years of age. He's played in the Eredivisie in terms of stats by club. So he's an out-and-out out number 10, which... Is that an alternative option to Eze, potentially? He played two games at the Euros. Um, his record for Fenerbahce, not 13 goals, 19 assists in 55 games, 10 goals and 7 assists in 40 games for Feyenoord, where he won a league title under Arnie Schlott. For me, probably not good enough. We probably need more. Um, you know, but what's everyone's thoughts on two players being offered for the likes of, you know, Jacob Ramsey, I think that's a, just a little bit, a little bit excessive for me. But you know, I could be wrong. Who knows? He, Jacob Ramsey, could come in and set the world alight. To me, it just doesn't make logical sense with the fact we need an out and out number six. We are crying for a number six, desperately crying for a number six. Let me know your thoughts down below if you haven't already. There's a report coming out that Tottenham want to sign Eze after the Euros which I think that's going to be realistic. You know, England are, as it stands right now, it's the last game, uh, last semi-final game, and hopefully the Netherlands' last game and England will progress. There's a lot of paper talk coming around that Eze, Tottenham will make a move as soon as he is out of the Euros. Let me know your thoughts on that. Do you think Eze will potentially join Tottenham after the Euros? I think Tottenham will go out and break the bank after the Euros if it's going to happen. Um, it just makes perfect sense. Can play in the 10, can play out wide. He's homegrown, same agency. If there's a player that's destined to join this football club, it is definitely Eberichi Eze. Let me know your thoughts down below if you haven't already. Make sure you drop a like. I will see you on the next one. I am.